Travis Wayne, good sell. Expletive deleted. <laughs> I'm realizing that I'm skipping over uh, videos on the upload. So I've got to go back after I do 10 here. <laughs> That's already uploading. I got to do uh, part 5 and part 9. So they're coming. Just out of order. Ah, crap. Alright. Uh, number six. Question number six. <laughs> Is uh, archaeology. Uh, I've already gone over this thanks to my uh, distant cousin, uh, Brother Fulmer, on YouTube, who did the uh, map of the Book of Mormon. And uh, I uh, pointed out how uh, Vincent Kuhn, a uh, guy who used to be a friend, used to be in a, a scientific group together that we're going to counteract the apologist false claims. Used to. Well, I used to be. Is that. Guilty, whatever the group is. All right, uh, archaeology. Uh, there is absolutely no archaeological evidence to directly support the Book of Mormon or the Nephites and Lamanites. I just went over this in ten, even though it may be out of order. <laughs> uh, Solomon Spalding. He used the geogra geography of the region with the Mound Indians to tell his story. They are the Nephites and Levi Lamanites of the Solomon Spalding manuscript. So yes, there is archaeological evidence to support the Book of Mormon. <laughs> we know where it is and the church won't tell us. Because I told you in the Brother Fulmer video that uh, uh, the church can't say exactly where the location is. They can even claim, I got swallowed up in the waters. It's gone. No evidence. Sorry. And the reason why is that nobody can challenge them. And they do that without plates. Nobody can challenge them on the Book of Mormon. Without a geography, nobody can challenge them about the geography and the actual people and cultures. And stories. It's that simple. Because once they establish a, an authoritative, God inspired location, uh, then you're going to have science step into the picture to mess everything up for you. So, like in the beginning videos, before five, <laughs> I talked about uh, our quote, uh, Jeremy quotes uh, J. Reuben Clark and uh, Holland who uh, make out the claim that uh, if there's anything false, the whole kit and caboodle is wrong. And they're right in that. Um, but uh, they're purposely doing it because they just don't care. Uh, and so they're purposely delaying as long as they can for the inevitable. Uh, they purposely uh, did the tithing scam uh, to generate more money uh, uh, for the days when the scam is exposed. Uh, that's that's what they did. Uh, they the uh, first presidency statement came out and said, "Oh, we are following the parable of the talents." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, they came out with a, uh, a discussion of uh, uh, church finances on their website after that. And it talks about how Joseph of Egypt had s recommended storehouses for Pharaoh for the seven years of plenty, and for the seven years of drought, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's actually what they're doing, is they're collecting money during a time of high attendance of the church members knowing that eventually it's not going to last and so 
Uh, they got their two billion. They invested it in Enzyme Peak, and uh, uh, been collecting interest ever since. And so they don't need Mormons anymore. They don't need the religion. They are now a self-sustaining business. They've got all their investments placed. They just keep making money off of the interest. They don't need the religion. And so they don't care about the Book of Mormon being proven false. They don't care about the history of the church exposing it as a fraud, as they think, because they weren't there. They don't know. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on, guys. Uh, so don't fall into this archaeological trap. That's the same rabbit hole that apologists use. Uh, um, so Jeremy is getting caught up in this trap because uh, critics of the church were arguing these to show that the Book of Mormon is false. And so Jeremy, Jeremy is just listing them all in question order. And... Uh, But uh, what the apologists do is they say, well, it could be true. And they draw their maps and, oh, this is what it looks like. And, and they have BYU professors get into a blood fest over whose theory is correct. It's, it's, apology is just horrifying. It's fallacy arguments that uh, are designed for a lose-lose situation. And it's a Mormon who came up with the win-win situation uh, that people are using. Uh, he, uh, he came up with a, an eighth thing. Uh, dude, you blew it. <laughs> don't, don't change what you've already done because that just messes up your whole premise. But he was right in the sense of there is no need to compromise because once a compromise is established somebody loses uh, and uh, you don't want people to lose unless it's a bad idea that would cause damage either financially or physically or, or um, whatever uh, and so he's wrong in that sense that there are exceptions to the win-win scenario. You do not want to allow corruption uh, to continue to be corrupt. And you have to stand your ground and say, hell no. Uh, but, uh, no. Uh, and so archaeology is uh, uh, used by apologists to say it could be here, it could be anywhere. We don't know. There's a lot of land. Nobody's doing archaeology because BYU is no longer paying for it. <laughs> yeah. 